Hey, bud, I thought you were going to help me with this driveway today. I'm sweaty. What's sweaty? I'm a book rack and my balls and everywhere. Okay, TMI. Well, Ringo, can I couch in? I really need your help, and you know I hate asking for your help. I didn't think you had it in you. Well, you did say that one time. If I really need your help, you would give it. But I'm not going to forget that, and I'm, I'm calling you on the favor, man. I was just fooling about. Oh, come on, Ringo, don't do this to me, bro. Hey, how about this? If you help me today, we'll get drunk in the hot tub later tonight. All right, Lunger. Let's do it. Yeah? All right, let's do this. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, name's Mike. Today we are putting the crown back on this driveway because it has been raining for, I don't know, about a week straight. So, Ringo bounced on me. So it's just me and you guys. For now, we gotta go down to the barn. We gotta get the box scraper hooked up on the back of the Kubota and get up here and put a crown back on this driveway. As you can tell, it's been a while since we've cut grass, so I can't exactly cut it right now because it's still wet. The ground might be a little swa soggy. Swaggy. What are you laughing at? But for now, we gotta get this box blade set up, head up top, and get on that driveway before it hardens back up. So we'll be putting that bad boy on the tractor. Huh, never mind these. Sorry, that's falling apart too. That right there is wood burner we're gonna be installing here shortly. We gotta get this in before the cold weather hits. We'll be putting it back in the back corner there. This will heat our barn. It's not insulated, so it's not gonna heat very efficiently, but hey, I got plenty of hardwoods out here to harvest, so at least the fuel's free. Project truck, she's gonna get her start here this winter. We've been saving up a little bit of cash so we could start uh, funding this project, so Oh, the guys out there who've been chomping at the bit for me to start this truck, it's going to happen. Just got to be patient and stay with me. All right, we got to get this thing fired up. We're just going to hit this. Let those glow plugs heat up a little bit because it is about 60 degrees in this barn. Yeah! We got the back box blade on. Only thing now is to take it up to the top. We're gonna get these rippers taken off of there because we're not gonna need those today. I think the ground's gonna be soft enough, but we have to level this out so I can get that crown pitch just right. I can't remember if it's still set up from yesterday, uh, last time I used it, but we're gonna find out. So we're gonna head up top. Now, some of you may have noticed that the deck is still on. I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not, but I have to cut grass today, and I don't know if you guys ever pulled one of these decks off. They're really easy to pull off. Uh, putting them back on is, is kind of a pain in the butt. It's not so much so, but it's inconvenient. So I'm going to try to do this job with leaving the mower deck on. I don't know how it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot and see if, <laughs> if I can pull it off. For those who are new to this type of stuff, the reason why I'm talking about the mower deck is because the back implement drop also controls the deck height so my deck will be on the ground this will be on the ground i don't think it's going to be too much of an issue but we'll see i guess uh, i'm not really worried about the wheels hitting the ground and dragging on the ground I'm worried about that pitch and that lean of that deck as it's creating a crown on the back of my um, on my drive there so we'll see we're gonna roll with it Now this might be hard to see on camera, but you can kind of tell where the rock has been dragging up. It's been falling to the side. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring that rock that's kind of fall, falling off the side's edge here. We're trying to bring it back up and create this little, this hump. Now the reason for it is obviously you want your water to run off the sides of your rock road. In the past, before I learned how to do this, um, 
I would get these potholes going in and out. And my driveway down here would get like a washboard effect. And that was because water was allowed to sit and the, we drive over it and it creates the potholes. Now the only problem I have today is right here is where a, wa a lot of water is collecting up. It's running down here where it used to run and cut across my road and make a covert and wash the road out. But now I've got enough crown where it's running around the backside and it's puddling up here. Not too big of a problem because I can drive around it, we don't have to go through it, but I want to work on it so it goes a little bit more into the grass and puddles in there and keeps it off my road. The other challenging part is our road goes straight uphill. Now, like I said, the problem was is I used to have water coming down here and it would cut right across the road here and it would go that way. Now, like I said, we've got it working around this way and it puddles up down there, so we want to get a little bit more of a crown. Now, we might go get some rock and we might knock that down a little bit, fill it in a little bit, but you can see as we drive down this road, we're constantly pushing rock inside, so we want to take that, we want to get it back up on the curve and make this, we want it to curve kind of like a turn three at Talladega, you know? We want to we want to make a curve, but we also want the water to run down, but not sit on this side and run down this side. So stick with me. By no means am I expert at this, but I've done this a few times on this particular driveway and I'm getting pretty good at it. One of the challenges I face on the hill is all the rock rolls down the hill. Woo! It gets loose and winds up down here. So ten, uh, periodically we have to drag that back up the hill. That's why you saw a big, uh, a big box full of gravel. Now I had to put this in four low to get that load up there, but it, it pulled it up there just fine. And then I kind of feather it out. I let up the box and raise it up as I get closer to the top of the hill. And then it'll naturally start falling down again and I'll have to do that maybe two or three times a year. But now we're on the back stretch. We're gonna try to dig out this this turn right here and see what we can do. Well see, now you can see I took a little bit off of that. That's nothing you're gonna do in one pass. We're gonna have to continuously make a couple passes on this and start eating it away slowly. Now you don't want to take too big of a bite even though you put your rippers on and get this done a lot quicker, but I don't want to get into any of the compacted rock that's already pre-existing underneath here. It's already a solid base surface and I don't want to agitate it right now and have to uh, and have to deal with any potholes this winter. I like it. It's been packed all summer. It's, it's doing a good job. There's no reason to, to rip the driveway right now. We just want to put a little bit of a crown and get the water to run down a little bit. But as you'll see, you're like, well, all your gravel's winding up in the middle of your driveway. That's fine. Because it's gonna fall down to the sides. As you drive at it, it's gonna shake and it's gonna rumble and it's gonna fall down. Believe it or not, the problem is you get so much falling down to the edges, you gotta bring it back up. Just like over here, that hill. It's gonna wanna naturally roll down the hill. Um, another thing I've been doing is leaving the weeds grow in the middle of the driveway. Some people don't like the way that looks. I have found that it actually kind of holds the rock together so it doesn't fall over the place. So let's just keep on doing a couple passes and see what we end up with. All right, so I've ran into something a little bit interesting and it's kind of doing something backwards that you shouldn't you know, normally do. But in this situation, working on the hill, at a slant, it's what I've been doing. So you guys remember how my back blade, my box blade, it's tilted to the what right side it would be. And when I go up the driveway here, you see this big muddy area. It's a big dip and then it goes back up like this. So when I'm, my box is tilted to the right side, I'm picking up gravel on this side, creating a crown, digging that out and eating it away and pushing a lot of that gravel to the center. Now. In this case right here, I want to slowly come up here after the turn right here, come up here and work my back way back over there so I can start pushing gravel in that little loose area right there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about when I make my next pass around, how I'm putting gravel back where that muddy spot is. 
where it's all gone out and it's creating a culvert. So your water, we want the water to run down. We don't want it to channel right there. So we're gonna put some rock there, try to pack it in there so it doesn't do that when we get next rainfall. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about, about putting that gravel back in that, that crevice and that, that wash out there where all the gravel disappeared from the water and the rain, bringing it back down. By the time I make this corner, I'm gonna have a full bucket. So that's what it's looking like right now. But when I make this corner over here, we're gonna have a full bucket to put over there. So watch and see how this goes down. like that now we still want to put a crown on it on the way down so we're not gonna we're gonna go down with the bucket tilted like this going over that ravine but not on the ravine just enough to put a cap in the center now you can see I filled that in but I don't want to dig that back out but I want to create a hump in the center there so the water will run and, and get it to find its way down there instead of cutting across it's not a perfect science but we're gonna to try to make this the best case scenario as we possibly can. All right, shut it down for a little bit because I have this continuing problem. I don't know why I keep on having it, but I just noticed it is my hydraulic inputs and outputs for my front loader, they keep on leaking. I have put those things on correctly. I've done them without pressure on them. I don't know why they keep on leaking, but they do. And it's kind of aggravating and upsetting. And I don't know why they keep on doing it. But that looks like a loose bolt. That lock washer isn't locked down very good. And uh, we're going to have to take it back down and see why this is not seeding very well but you can kind of see I don't know if you guys can see this or not kind of see that there's a gap in there but there's no gap on this one right there so I'm gonna finish up what I'm doing here we're gonna get this down to the shop we're gonna figure out why this is leaking I haven't had many problems with this BX 23 Kubota but that is one of them that's been a thorn in my side and I haven't been able to really figure out. I have had issues with the throttle creeping down when I'm cutting grass. Um, it doesn't like to stay in its PTO range and it'll creep below 3000 when you have the throttle out. It just slowly creeps. You got to constantly pull on that throttle. Um, other than that, I haven't had really much any troubles. So we're about halfway done with this driveway. It's not working out too bad with the mower deck being on. Uh, you kind of listen to that annoying wheel hit on gravel. It's kind of a, an annoying sound. But Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? For the most part, it hasn't caused any issues. Enough! But that hydraulic leak, now that's getting on my nerves. So let me finish up here. We'll go down to the shop and we'll see what's going on with that hydraulic leak. Completely clean flat surfaces. Oh, the leak's definitely coming from the top. I have no idea why. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. She looks like a 316th type of girl. Oh, oh, she's a big girl. She's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Nah, half inch? Nah, maybe. Oh no, she's not half inch girl either. Man, don't you love playing the guessing game? 7 16ths? We'll give that a shot. 
Oh, ho, Shia metric. Your kung fu is no match for my air bending butt style. Oh yeah, good old 12 millimeter. That'd be it. Oh wow, that's that's awesome. They cross threaded it. I'm not through with you, Buster. I'm not through with you. Well, I can't get it tight. Well, you know what happens when they cross thread? You just gotta send it. Now, obviously, I'm gonna have to retap this bolt. I sent it home because I knew the job was gonna have to be done anyways. So, just to get me by, I sent it home. And to correct it in the future, I will take this assembly off and I'll thread that. So, I didn't see any issues with hydraulics here on the front. I don't see any issues down here. The only thing I saw was that this bolt was cross-threaded and it was loose. But still, that should hold tight unless that whole assembly's bent. It doesn't look like it's bent. So I'm kind of a loss for words. So I guess the only thing that's left to do is we'll take this bucket off and we're gonna start cutting some grass. I got a kid up there He's spying on me. If you don't move, he won't see you. Psh, nice ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. Is it all you do all day long? Is he ice cream sandwiches? No. Hmm? All right, I almost forgot. I almost forgot this. What would you guys think of me taking a weed eater? She needs some work, but we're gonna take weed eater do you guys ever wonder how long you can run a weed eater full throttle and just keep on putting tank and tank and tank gas in it and see how long it'll run for? I I bought a new weed eater and I'm thinking about doing that with this one. So let me know what you guys think. Should I run a weed eater to death? I know Kevin at Hidden Heights Farm, he went and he bought himself a cheap chainsaw, did a review on that. But reviews are boring, man. I want to break some stuff. I want to run some stuff to failure. I want to be able to take a cheap Troy built Lowe's $89 weed eater that I've had forever and I have used it and abused it and I want to run it to failure. So at least if you go buy something new, you know what it's capable of. The only reason I'm doing that, that weed eater is perfect for around the house, but it's not really good for the big brushy property. So I had to go buy myself a steel, uh, something a little bit more powerful and something easier on my elbows. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want me, if you guys want to see me burn this weed eater up, full throttle, tank after tank, see how long it'll last, let me know in the comment section. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to subscribe and Project Chuck, that's happening this winter. We've been saving up. We gotta get that heater and stove in there, like I said. We'll get the pipe ran, and we're gonna fire this barn up, get it nice and toasted warm, then we can work in here this winter. So, appreciate you guys watching. See you on the next episode. Sunny Soul Homestead. Nothing. He don't say no words. He don't talk. See you guys. Mm -hmm.